The power of habit is that it will help you last long. Whatever you are doing now, it's a seed you are sowing for the future. Prayer is one of the tools that God has given us to be intimate with Him. Tell your neighbor, I hate so far. I hate so far. It's not my fault. I hate so far. I just wanted to serve God and meet a need. It was obvious to me that these people had lost it once they crossed the border, they had lost it. Because I was, I was in my room one time, and then a certain guy came. And he was telling me he used to be a pastor in Nigeria. An old daddy man, a pastor in Nigeria. And all you're doing now is women everywhere. You used to be a pastor in Nigeria. Jonah rose up to flee. How many people have, have, have run away? And God asked them. Send them. Say, go, go talk to that person. And I rose up to flee unto Tachish from the presence of the Lord. And I was telling her, I said, when God is doing something, it will not always make sense at some point. But eventually, it always does. It always does. I was telling her, I said, last month, makes it 14 years I've been in this school. And it started with something, just simple, just... Leave your father's house. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, 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 so when I see people who God is asking for something small, <laughs> and you can't give God something small. Ah, amen. <sighs> don't let that, don't, don't, don't let the little you have now that you think is big be all you, ha- you are going to have in life. I'm not talking to someone. Don't let that be all you're going to have in life. I have so much I could share and say. I came to this city. Ah. We were laughed at. We were mocked at. We were called all sorts of names. And all sorts of things were said against us. Accused of things. We were heartbroken and disappointed. I've shared some of the stories. One of the ones I will never forget and I'll continue to say anywhere I go to in the world. You know, one of the sisters who gave me so much hope. I think, I don't know who was preaching the other day, and I said, you know, there are these people who will always be there to motivate you, motivate us, amen. You know, I remember one of our first services, you know, when she heard that, you know, we're going to try doing something here in this city, you know, just, you know, just serve God as a young people. And she was so excited, wow, that's so beautiful, and all that things, you know, like, I'm like, oh, thank you, God, for giving me this one, praise God. I'm like, God, we're going to do something great here. Yeah. Wonderful girl, amen. And she came. Came once. I never came again. She never came back. Amen. I didn't understand it. It was tough for me. I couldn't get it. I said, what, what was wrong? What did I do? What did you do wrong? I don't get it. Not a word. It took time for me later to find out. Years later to find out. One of the reasons she never came back was because of another person she saw there. You know, let me say this. Ah, may God help his people. Simple think salvation is only for them. Simple think that you are not good enough to be in church. So apparently before I came to this city, they had had a relationship I knew nothing about. That was sexual. And it's funny how people can put up a color of holiness, holier than thou. It's really sad. And, 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 and you have to understand what I went through during these times as an individual. Because here I am thinking I did something wrong or something is wrong. And it had nothing to do with me. I'll go every time again. I kept on for years trying to follow up on her, trying to check on her. Sister, sister you know. What's happening? You are so excited when we started. What is going on? I don't get it. I don't get it. It took years. They had a sexual relationship. And so when she comes on that day to find the brother in church, it's a problem. The rest is history. Amen. 
Let me tell you, neighbor, rise up. And go do the work God sent you. Not flee. Amen. Don't flee. And so that's how she rose up and she ran away. He said, but Jonah rose up to flee unto Tashish from the presence of the Lord. Some people think you can actually get away from God. It's amazing how the God who came to you and spoke to you, you now think you can flee from his presence. And he went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tashish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tashish from the presence of the Lord. Next one quickly. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. We know the story. Because of time, I'm going to, I'm going to just uh, say it. So here, the man is trying to run from the thing God is calling him for. Let me say this to you. When God calls you for a task, it's an opportunity. Are you hearing me? A call to serve is an opportunity for your blessing. Hello? Hello? If you see, why is he running? Because one of the reasons he's running, obviously, is because he thinks, you know, God needs him. He thinks God needs him. Besides the other things which he would later say that he knows also and understands of God. But he thinks God needs him. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. He thinks God needs him. Not knowing, no, God is trying to help you. God is trying to bless you. God is trying to teach you something. God is trying to change you. At the end of the story, we of course, we understand that Jonah later changed because God started teaching him things. Things he thought he knew, he, know, he realized he didn't know, know them as much as he knew. So he tries to run away and then something happens. Something happens. This one I want to dwell on because I've seen it happen again and again and again and again. When God comes to you to ask for your help or your favor, don't be a fool. This is where I started from when I said relationship, understanding people. It is not because he's in need. It is because you will need him. Are you hearing me? Are you with me? When God comes to you asking for something, it is not because he's in need. It will look as though he's in need, but it is you who will need him. Praise the Lord. Do you understand what it means to be God? To be God, he has no need. Any need that seems like it's a need is, a, is, is an artificial situation he created. He created man. Hello? It's not because he cannot do without man. He was doing fine without man. So any problem you see that seems as though he needs you, it is not, he is not the one that needs you. You are the one who will need him. So he's giving you an opportunity to earn what you are, what you are going to get from him. Hallelujah. Oh, why am I in tears? You know, so why, I, why was I crying? I was crying because a lot of missed emotions. Because when I think of how everything has played out all those times, those, those 14 years, how it's all tied to one choice and one decision. And how everything had played out. And how I may never have known that or seen them. It's just amazing. How the connection. Amen. I'm, I'm thinking of someone like, uh, you know, like my wife. I tell her, I said, I said, thank you for coming to Ukraine. Amen. There's no way I would have met you if I didn't come to Ukraine. Or you met me. Amen. I'm not talking to somebody. That's what you don't, you don't get, you don't get it. Uh, uh, you know, I... <laughs> Let me tell you, God does not make mistakes. Tell me, God does not make mistakes. You may not like it. It may hurt. It may seem painful. In that moment, it will seem as if he doesn't know what he's doing, but he's up to something that is beyond your scope of understanding. The Lord sent out a great wind. I've seen people who God called who refused. They refused. They turned him down. They had no time. I was speaking to, to, to the daughters the other day on, 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 uh, on uh, Friday after service. So I dropped them in front of the hostel. And I told them, I said, life is funny. I said, there's somebody who you would have called before service now, right now, and the person will tell you, I'm busy. I'm too busy. I have things I'm doing. 
I have, I have croak, I have life happening to me and other things, so I don't have time for service. I said, but if you go now to the person's room right now, you see that that person is watching a movie. Or sleeping. That same time, he or she is unwilling to give. She's using it for something that is not that important after all. I've seen people's lives become complicated over time because they refused God. Because they thought, you know, the thing God wanted, he didn't want to give it to him. Look at his life. He was going to die if not that God came to his rescue. He's running away. The Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the sheep was like to be broken. Next one quickly because of time. Verse 5. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wares that were in the sheep to lighten off them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the sheep and he lay and was fast asleep. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can I pray for somebody? May you not make the same mistakes your parents made. Amen. May you not make the same mistakes your parents made. Listen, let me tell you one thing. Huh? It's good to turn to God early. You hear me? It's what? Early. Early. Believe me, I can tell you. You see, many of the problems families are having today is because of the stubbornness of their parents. At the time God gave them opportunity and called them, they were not listening. The exact same thing God is doing to you right now. He's giving you opportunities daily. Speaking to one of the sons on Friday, I said something, I said, a lot of people say things about Adam. Why did Adam and Eve, why did they eat from the fruit? If they did not do it, it would not be here. But they are doing the same thing. Because to them, it's all about the tree. Not knowing every day, it's the choices you are making. Am I talking to somebody? Let me ask your neighbor, say, are you a Jonah? Say, are you a Jonah? Amen. You have to realize, you decide, uh, uh, let me just travel. See, this is why it's good to really, really, make sure you are really serving God with all your heart because you don't know who is entering the place with you. Sometimes you do not realize the source of the problem. Because all of these people are having difficult times. Get the source of the problem is fast asleep. Praise God. Let me ask you anymore. What has God asked you to do? Please go and do it. I want peace of mind. There are some people who come into your life and things begin to be tough and hard. Hard toughness, issues. Life. And so, it is not a case of they came into your life. You came into their life. Again, I'm speaking about family sometimes. You know, parents, for example, or siblings. Sometimes you do not know who that Jonah is. Some of you, you may even know them. The Jonah in your house. Say, guy, repent, guy. Right? Every time you're bringing problems, it's a change, guy. You two go to church now. Go to church. <laughs> yeah, it was, you know, he just he paid his, his pay. You know, it's amazing. The lens people would go to run away from God. This guy suddenly had money to pay for transport fare to run away from God. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the sheep and he lay and was fast asleep. He's sleeping tight, sleeping well, no problem whatsoever with him. But the people around him are feeling the impact. Can I speak to somebody? 
When you fail to rise, you do not know how many people you are affecting. Am I talking to somebody? When you fail to rise, you do not know how many people you are affecting. It's part of why I was crying because if, 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 you know, if someone told me 14 years ago, I was telling her, I said, I said, you don't get it. I said, when I came to this country, I was kidnapped for three days. For three days, I'm locked up. Some agent locked me somewhere. Me and five, four others took all the monies that we had. I said, I said, I said, I try, if you, you say, I said, you both have agents that are taking care of you. Yeah, and your mouth is running. You have, you have not seen issue. That's why your mouth is running. So within, within two days of being in this country, our name is everywhere in Ukraine. He said some Nigerian boys that escaped, they came to Ukraine and they ran away. Well, that's not true. We're shocked. Oh, God, the university, the, 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 the director is angry at us. From the first day, we have rector meeting. <laughs> rector is there. Pro-rector is there. Everybody is there. From the first day, we landed. Everybody said, yes. They have a meeting about us. Say, say you ran away. They told us you ran. We didn't run away. We were taken by these people. They put us somewhere. They say you people ran away. You have to be deported right now, or you take the admission by force. So we take the admission, sir. <laughs> in the first few months, someone told me in the midst of all of those problems. At one day, this is what you're going to be used for in Ukraine. I'd say it's a lie. What are you talking about? Me are trying to sort myself out. I don't even know what I'm doing with my life right now. Amen. 14 years ago. When you rise, you give others opportunity to rise. Am I talking to somebody? You know, he's asleep. And there's a problem. Go to the next one. Verse 6. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, come by God. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. Hallelujah. Next one. And they said everyone to his fellow, come, let us cast lots that we may know for, for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots and the Lord fell upon what? Amen. He was not going to say anything if not that they caught him. Listen to me. Are you with me? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Men can keep secret. Hello? Men can what? Not men only. Men mean human beings. Women too. <laughs> what are the things God has told you? What's that thing God has asked of you and demanded of you? Here he is. He was quiet. Until they cast lots. All of them cast lots. And then it's amazing how unbelievers can cast lots and they'll still catch you. And it was found out that is the one. A guy, how far? Amen. Next. Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us. What is thine occupation? And whence comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people are thou? These are questions they were supposed to ask him before they. They received this money. Amen. Before they allowed him into their sheep. Help me look at him and say, are you the cause of my problem? Answer God. Answer God. Answer God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Tell your neighbor, serve God. Well, with all your heart, sincerely, so that things will not be tough for us. Amen. Okay. Have you ever written an exam? Or looked at other people's exams. 
But I post one was easy, but your one was hard. You're wondering what is going on. Everybody's exam was easy. But your own, your own group. It's tough. <laughs> ah, Jonah. Amen. Go to the next one, Jonah. <laughs> and he said unto them, I am an Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which has made the sea and the dry land. I'll try to conclude because of time. Then were, were, the, then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord. He merely said that. They are running from him. Because he had told them. Next one. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may become unto us? For the sea wrought and was tempestuous. Next one. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. God's ways are not our ways. God's what? Who would ever know that the road to the palace in a foreign land is by first and foremost becoming a prisoner? Becoming a slave? Then you become a prisoner. Then the next thing, you are the prime minister of the most powerful country in the world. God's ways are not our ways. Who would have known that the road to Nineveh, where he was running from, is through the sea? It's amazing the extent people would go to get away from God. Because to him it was easier to be thrown into the sea than to go to Nineveh. Let me, let me tap your name and say, wake up, wake up. Say, wake up, wake up. Amen. Wake up. You see, you see, pride and arrogance and stubbornness of people and, you know, this hardness of heart can be funny. And you think that for someone like him, God will easily give up on him. God has seen your kind before. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, it's amazing because all of this was avoidable. He could simply have said yes from the beginning and gone to do it. Sometimes the problem you are in in your life is just because you have been stubborn. They're just hard and stubborn. That's not how to serve. Let go. Amen. Do what? Let go. Listen to me. It pays to serve God. It pays. It pays. I was in the city of Harkov. And, um, and I heard God clearly say to me, he says, if you consign yourself with my business, you will become my business. That's it. Not that I will concern myself with your business. You, you are my full, you are my business. Morning to evening, it's, um, it's you I'm concerned about. He said, cast me into the sea. Instead of, you know, just pray to God. Instead of saying, oh God, I repent and I'm sorry. No, he said, no. Stop, no. No, 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 no. Let the words happen. Instead of just saying, oh God, I apologize. You know, oh God, okay, forgive me. Forgive me for running away. Let this one survive. He says, no, you better just cast me into this. Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea become unto you. For I know that for my sake, this great tempest is upon you. Next one. Nevertheless, the men rowed. Hard to bring it to the land, but they could not. For the sea wrought and was tempestuous against them. Next, quickly. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee. They asked for forgiveness for what they were about to do. Then they actually did it. 15. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea. And the Bible says the sea ceased from her region. Immediately it left. Amen. Praise God. Let me ask your neighbor, let me tell your neighbor, don't make me. Send you away. Say yes to God. Amen. Say yes to God. 
Ja jest to dla mnie. A lot of men, sometimes women too, they never take God seriously until they are now at the verge of problems. When the devil has succeeded in sowing things in their hearts, it's either they, they are, it's either they are, they are not having problems in their own personal lives between themselves and their wives, or their children is not beginning to be too much of a pain, and they're now wondering where did this problem come from? I was never like this. It's not about what you were like. You give the devil an opportunity. You give the devil an opportunity in your house. The Bible says, give no room to the devil. So men never kneel down to, to pray to God until problem comes. That time they are looking for God and looking for men, moving, moving from men of God to men of God. Listen to me. There's a wiser route. There's what? Humble yourself now. Talk to God. Serve God. Give him your all. You will not go unrewarded. Look at what happens to him. Uh, see the next one, 16, 16. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared. Amen. So God is always prepared. God is always prepared. Amen. So all of these things you are doing, God is just waiting. Jonah. In your mind now, you think, I don't know what you can do. It's okay, it's okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's okay. So where is he now? He says, okay, it's not in the sea, okay. <laughs> it's so funny how we think that we are wiser than God, or that God does not see us for who we are. Anything you are doing right now, please hear me, don't miss this one. Anything you are doing right now, God sees it clearly. It's, it's not like he's seeing it partially or not seeing. You know, he sees everything clearly. God knows where you'll be in the next 10 years. All he wants is for you to listen to his instructions to guide you there. You know, God knows who your husband is and who is not your husband. He knows who your wife is and who is not your wife. Because now the Bible says God had prepared. There was something out there. There is something God has prepared. It is your choices and decisions that is now affecting it. God prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights like you know the story. It was not until he repented while inside. And I do not understand why some people have to wait. For things to become so tough and so bad before they finally, finally decide to change. Hallelujah. If you don't serve God now, when do you plan to? Amen. When do you plan to? If you don't serve him now, if you don't give him your best, if you don't give him your time, when do you want to? Is it when you have babies running all around with you and there's no time? Is it when you, have, when you are working consistently every day of the week, having no time for yourself? Is it when you are doing calls? Going days without even sleeping, you can't even sleep. Attending from, you know, patient to patient, patient to patient, patient to patient. And still at the end of the day, everybody is angry with you. Your superiors are angry. Your juniors are angry. The patients are angry. The relatives are angry. When is that time? To give God your best. I would say serve the Lord in the days of your youth. Not in your old age. best decision I ever made in my life was saying yes to God. Was saying yes to God. And I do not regret it till today. I do not regret it. For all that I am and all that I have become and all that I will become is tied to it.
Every one of you right now, there is a call. There is a call on your life. There's a need. Can you imagine what it would be like if someone like you now would take God seriously? And for any reason, God takes you somewhere tomorrow. Because for all you know right now, it, just, it may all look like it doesn't make sense. But God's up to something. I was not trained or prepared for me. In fact, let me, say, let me share this one. Let me share this one to help you. When I came to this country and God started speaking to me things, I started seeing visions and dreams, you know. The first thing I did was I called my pastor, my church back at home. I sent him a very long email, told him everything I was seeing and experiencing. And what was happening to me. And what God was placing in my heart. I wonder, I'm, I'm sharing this story for a reason. You know what happened? He didn't take me serious. He didn't take me serious. You know why? Because when I left church, I was nobody. If I were a pastor or an assistant pastor, you'd have taken me seriously. Or a cell leader. He didn't take me serious. I was nobody. He never even responded to the mail. With every sense of humility, and I say this humbly, with every sense of humility, I thank God for his God because he's the one that calls me. With every sense of humility, God has helped us. We have been able to do things here. That even head pastors that were sent from Africa to come and do could not do. What does that mean? It can be just, just as simple as you right now. God is not looking for pros. Amen. God is not what? Professional. It's how you take God. I was just like you. Listen to me. I was just like you, completely like you. All I know is I loved God. And I served him with all my heart and I studied the word. I was just loving God. Really with all my heart. I go for meetings. Go for cell meetings. Go for leaders meetings. Just when they went opportunity, they say everybody can come. You mustn't be a leader. I say, okay, fine. Then let me come. I just go to church. Go for all night. I just go to church. Just pray. Just serve God. I was just like, little did I know God was working something. Amen. The Lord is up to something in your life. As some of you here, God has been speaking to you consistently again and again. Or you've been stubborn like Jonah. You've been hard. You've been running away. Some of you, because of peer pressure, because of fears, because you think people will look at you a certain way. Some of you, because you are afraid to make that sacrifice and that bold step, you do not know what the outcome is. Listen, I tell you, God has sent me to you today to tell you, if you make those decisions with him in mind, you will never regret it.